So next up was a casino gauntlet match that they announced was under sudden death rules. Yeah. Okay. So the winner gets a shot at the international title at double or nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I want to start by saying that they did end up getting about 2,500 people in the building. But, you know, a week prior to that, they were at 1,400 fans. And then they announced the uh, John Moxley IWGP Heavyweight Championship match with Hobbs, and they sold about 700 tickets. Okay? Cool. But still, I mean, if we're, if we're trying to say that, like, 2,500 fans at a Dynamite is good, like, it's not. You can get 5,000 people in there. But, you know, they weren't going to get that, so they set it up for 20-whatever. But still, it's not like that's not like a great crowd or anything like that. And Tuesday on Wrestling Observer Live at 3 Eastern, the day before the show, they still only had one match announced, Moxley and Hobbs. This, we have this issue all the time. What the fuck's happening on the show? Why did you shoot no angles at the press conference so you can announce something? Why do we only have one match? That's all we had. I've said it a thousand times. Give me a card. Give me some names. Something. I had people messaging me. And these are not people that are like, you know, on my public. They, they DM'd me on Twitter. They're like, you know, me and my friends were going to go, but like, we have no idea who's going to be there. We don't know what matches. Are, like, we're not going. We don't know who's going to be there. So eventually they announced a card and some appearances or whatever. But it's like, look at all of the stars that were in this gauntlet that they never advertised for the show. They didn't advertise Jay White. They didn't advertise Will Ospreay. They, did, they didn't advertise Penta. They did, none of these people were advertised, okay? Now, let's talk about the match. They announced a casino gauntlet match for an international title shot at Double or Nothing under sudden death rules, okay? Mm -hmm. My first thought is, what in the fuck does this mean? What does sudden death mean? So, they introduce the first two individuals. It is Dante Martin and Jay White. Okay? Mm -hmm. They start wrestling. The announcers are trying to explain that what this means is, it is a gauntlet match, and the first pinfall or submission ends it. And I'm like, okay, that's every gauntlet match. But then they say, no, no, no. The match ends. Yeah. Okay. So so you're telling me that if the match starts with Jay White and Dante, mm -hmm. Jay White pins Dante, the whole match is over. He Correct. goes... Before anyone else comes in the ring. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of fucking weird. So Dante gets thrown over the top rope, and... Uh, and suddenly out comes, they just hit Penta's music. Mm -hmm. And so then my next thought is, well, are there intervals? I mean, there must be intervals, right? No <laughs> clock. There was no clock. No countdown. No. There's nothing where the fans can go, five, four, three. It's just all of a sudden they hit music randomly. Yes. And another bloke comes out. Okay. And... Like, I'm watching this match, and we're m several minutes in, and I'm starting to figure out what the fuck's going on, okay? And then, Taz suddenly, when, I think it was Lance Archer came out, Taz, who is an employee of this company, he is on commentary. This is his job. He asks, is he the last guy, or are there more? <laughs> he has no idea what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Then Excalibur says, I believe there are 21 men in the back. He did? Yes, so he said. Okay. There are 21 men in the back prepared to come out for this gauntlet. I'm like, so, so there's 21 guys in the back waiting to maybe come out. But if somebody gets a win somewhere, it's just all over. They just go home. Yes. Well, that is the answer. Yeah. I counted eight. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there were intervals. I can tell you, and I'm actually grateful for this, 
I don't think anybody came out during a commercial. Okay. It wasn't like we came out of a commercial and suddenly there's 18 guys in the ring. And I forget who they are. So Osprey ends up coming in. And that's and then Osprey is the first time the crowd came to life. Like before that, dude, they were just kind of watching it. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Okay. Well, because it's fucking Will Osprey. No. I know that. I know why they went nuts. I'm going to tell you why they didn't care earlier. Oh. So Osprey comes out. They go nuts. He does some cool stuff. And then, uh, and then Commander tries some shit, and Osprey avoids it. And uh, actually, uh, Commander hit uh, somebody with something. Uh, Kyle went for an armbar in Commander. Uh, Osprey, something happened. Anyway, the point is, Osprey hits Commander with a hidden blade. Yes. He pins him. And so I thought to myself, okay, let me get this straight. At the pay per view, you had Will. By God, Osprey versus Brian fucking Danielson in a match that literally was built around who is the best wrestler in the world, right? That's how they build it. That, that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. Will Osprey beats Brian Danielson in the middle of the ring in a match that, like everybody, one of the greatest matches I've ever seen. Whatever you want to give it star ratings or whatever. He can't get a match with Roderick Strong off that. But he hit Commander with a hidden blade. Now he's earned it. Right. The match itself was fun. It was a good match. This booking, the concept of this match is atrocious. Okay? Now... The other issue, I explained everything to you listening right now. The viewer, the listener, the podcast listener. The fans in the crowd didn't hear any of this. They didn't have any idea what was going on. So I think that they thought that it was like a Royal Rumble. Because two guys started and then another guy comes out. I think they thought it was like a rumble, but Dante gets thrown over the top rope and dies on the ground. The fans probably presumed he was eliminated. Next guy, Penta, comes in, and then Dante just gets back in and keeps wrestling. So the fans are like, well, what the fuck's going on? No one knows. So, hey, listen, sometimes you got to try new things. If they want to do this concept again, that's cool. But, like, we need to explain what the fucking rules are. You need to explain it to the live crowd. You need to put that screen up. And I don't give a shit what they do in the clusterfuck for Joey Janela's spring break. You need to have a clock so that people know there are intervals and you can allow the people to count down and get into the match. Wrestling-wise, great. But I just watched this segment. I was like... Is this 2005 TNA? Actually, before Actually, that. Yes, I can't no. even say 2005. That's when they kind of got a little hot. This was like a 2004 TNA deal. We have this crazy match that's going to be full of crazy shit, and you got to figure out what the fuck it is. And they didn't even do the mic today. It's really quite simple. Here's five screens of rules. They didn't even do that. The announcers are trying to explain the rules verbally, while the other announcers are like, how many guys are left? Is this the last guy? Nobody knows. So anyway, could have been done better. <laughs> yeah. So Osprey is, I believe, the sixth guy, and if I counted right. And uh, if you forgive the term, he elevated the atmosphere so intensely. He comes out, and he's, he's a major star. And the crowd may have been confused, but they figured out there's wrestlers doing cool shit. We'll watch that. Oh, my God, it's Will Osprey. And they went nuts, and he looked great. And for a little while, he was a one-man wrecking crew, and people were trying to double-team and was still beating their ass. I think eventually this Lance Archer came out and overwhelmed him because he's big, and uh, they did some stuff from there. So the thing you're looking is, this is the match near the end here, where Osprey hit uh, uh, Kyle O'Reilly with something resembling a hidden blade. Kind of a half cross body, half elbow strike deal. But he grabs it for the Storm Driver, but freezes. I talked about this earlier. I can't do this move. You did talk about it earlier. There's a key point. It comes up later. So uh, he freezes. He gets cut off. Commander does a shooting star, but he's pinning with his head straight up. So Osprey hit him, blades his head off, pins him and wins. 
Taz dubs this match a blender at 150 miles an hour. <laughs> That's what it was. Which is exactly what it was. You know, I'm actually not, you know, I, 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 was, I was critical of it, but they did explain it later very clearly. But I actually would have preferred if Excalibur had not explained it to us in the moment. Because the way he explained it was, remember, he said, remember... After he injured Danielson, he said he was going to retire that move. And to me, as a viewer, it's like, like if this were my job and I didn't watch the press conference, I'd have no fucking idea what you were talking about. Yep. It was it like, just don't talk about it then. Let them tell the story later, which they did. And then you're not sitting there as a viewer feeling like you're not part of the club, which is one of the things you feel like a lot sometimes watching this show. You're not part of the club. You're not filled in on what's going on. They didn't tell you. It's a secret club. That's the people don't like feeling like they're not part of the club. No, especially when you're trying to watch your show. So uh, the smoke is cleared. The dust is settled. What did this match achieve? It's Will Ospreay versus Roderick Strong at double or nothing for the international title. As Roderick Strong's biggest fan, I can tell you that match is going to absolutely rule. Oh, yes. And Roddy is doomed. He, well, maybe. I. Because mm. here's the deal. Eh? You're supposed to think that he's doomed. I guess. But there's obviously great issues in the Callis family. There are. So it is possible that he could be screwed. That would be dumb. Well, got to tell a story here, brother. Mm. I'm begging for him. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.